On today's show, the NTSB says Uber is at fault in the fatal accident involving one of its self-driving cars. Anheuser-Busch is setting up a hydrogen infrastructure to help fuel cell semis transport its beer. And BMW and MIT create inflatable materials that can be 3D printed. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. The National Transportation Safety Board has released its preliminary findings into the fatal crash involving an Uber autonomous test vehicle in Arizona. The autonomous system, installed by Uber, registered the pedestrian six seconds before impact while it was traveling a little over 40 miles an hour. That should have been more than enough time to stop, but the system never engaged the brakes. While despite the test vehicle, a Volvo XC90 coming with a number of driver assist systems from the factory, including automatic emergency braking, Uber disabled these functions while the vehicle was in autonomous mode, quote, to reduce the potential for erratic vehicle behavior. Some are speculating that to mean Uber was having problems with false brake engagement, like at overpasses and for road signs, and then it turned off the assist features rather than addressing the issue. The system was also not designed to alert the operator. The most recent AutoLine After Hours was all about the current state of 3D printing in the automotive industry. But BMW is studying how the technology could be applied to future interiors and along with MIT has come up with an interesting solution. They figured out how to make a printable material that's both air and water tight. Liquid silicone is used to build the structure of the material and it's able to transform into a variety of shapes, functions, or even stiffnesses. BMW says the material, quote, points towards a future of transformable surfaces for adaptive human comfort, cushioning, and impact performance. Still to come, Anheuser-Busch wants to set up a hydrogen refueling network for fuel cell semi-trucks, transporting its beer. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. One of the challenges holding back the use of fuel cells is building a hydrogen infrastructure to refuel them. But Anheuser Busch has an interesting way to solve this. It operates 13 breweries in the United States that ship beer every day to distribution points. They use the same routes at the same time every day. So it wants to set up a series of hubs on highways in the western U.S. where fuel cell semis could refuel. Nikola will make the semis and it will manufacture hydrogen at those hubs using hydrolysis and renewable electricity. That would drastically cut down the cost of the hydrogen and the hubs would be about 200 to 600 miles apart. And another advantage is that drivers can drive to a hub, then switch to another truck and return. That way, they would be home every night instead of being on the road for days on end. And that could help truck fleets attract more drivers since they face a driving shortage right now. Nikola is developing the fuel cell semi in collaboration with Bosch, and it has some impressive stats. 1,000 horsepower and 2,000 pound-feet of torque. That would give it performance far better than any diesel semi has today. And by using a fuel cell instead of batteries to power the truck, Nikola says it would weigh the same as a diesel-powered truck. While well, Mercedes is adding two new model designations to the E-Class family, the E450 and 454 Matic. They will get an upgraded 3-liter twin-turbo V6 engine with 33 more horsepower and 15 more pound-feet of torque. There's also a new three-spoke steering wheel, two new interior trim options with matching center consoles, unique 19-inch wheels, and a rear safety package is new to the car. Look for the 2019 E-Class 450 models to go on sale this fall. And coming up next, GM's president, Dan Ammon, explains how the company is balancing its scale while leaving unprofitable markets. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go 
and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. The auto industry has always been predicated on scale. The car company that can make the most cars can amortize the cost of making them. However, General Motors is actively reducing its scale. It's pulled out of Europe and a number of other markets recently. On AutoLine this week, we're joined by Dan Ammon, the president of GM, and he explained how the automaker is balancing its scale while exiting unprofitable markets. Scale does matter, um, but it matters on a, on a, um, on a slightly more focused basis than just this general idea of global scale. So if you look at the markets that we are focused on today, um, you know, our biggest markets of North America, South America, and China. In each one of those markets, we're, we're in the, the Americas were market leader, um, number one in both, and China were number one or two, depending on the, on the day of the week. Um, but we have leading market shares and leading scale uh, in each of those major markets. Um, the places that we have elected to not invest further and that some of the places that we've pulled out from um, were places where we didn't have significant scale. And if you look at Europe as the example, we were sort of six, seven percent market share. Um, we were in sort of the mainstream segment, which was where there was a lot of pressure uh, coming on. Uh, there was significant Europe-specific regulatory change uh, that was uh, that was happening. And the strategic conclusion that we reached was that scale mattered in Europe as well. We didn't really have it. And there was an opportunity to create scale with a partner, with PSA in this instance, um, so that some of these investments for regulatory and other, uh, other investments you know, could be realized on a, you, know, you could get two, three times the scale versus you know, what we were getting locally. So, so scale does matter, but I think it's, it's, it's a bit more nuanced than just sort of massive global scale is the only thing that counts. And you can watch that entire discussion with Dan Ammon right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And just a quick programming note here before I sign off, there won't be a new Autoline Daily on Monday due to the Memorial Day holiday. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Tuesday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.